Gary Leon Ridgway was born on February 18, 1949, in Salt Lake City, Utah, to Father Thomas and Mother Mary, who had three sons, with Gary being the middle child. Ridgway's home life was somewhat troubled due to violent arguments between his parents. His mother is described by relatives as being domineering, and his father, a bus driver, would often complain about the presence of sex workers. Until he was 13, Gary had a bedwetting problem, which caused his mother to wash his genitals with each episode. He would later tell defense psychologists that this led to having conflicting feelings of anger and sexual attraction towards his mother, even fantasizing about killing her as an adolescent. His first major crime would come at only 16 years old when he led a six-year-old boy into the woods and stabbed him through his ribs and into his liver. The boy luckily survived the attack. Despite being held back a year due to dyslexia and an IQ in the low 80s, Gary did manage to graduate from Taiyi High School in 1969 and married his 19-year-old high school girlfriend Claudia King shortly afterwards. Their marriage would end within a year, though, due to infidelity by both parties. Craig had an affair while Ridgway, who was sent to Vietnam while with the Navy, began having frequent sexual intercourse with local sex workers. The anger he had previously showed to his mother, and would later show to his many female victims, began to resurface at this time, when Gary contracted gonorrhea from one of the sex workers and intentionally continued to sleep with them without protection. He married his second wife, Marcia, in 1973, a few years after separating from his first, and began to become religious, often crying after sermons and even proselytizing door to door. But even his religion couldn't curb the anger and lust that coursed through his veins, as Gary, despite often complaining about the sex workers like his father before him, continued to sleep with them. He had an insatiable sexual appetite, wanting sex from his wife several times a day on top of this, especially enjoying making his wife participate in sex in inappropriate public places, even sometimes in areas where his victim's bodies would later be discovered. Gary and Marcia would eventually divorce in 1981, but not before having a son Matthew two years after being wed in 1975. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Gary Ridgway is believed to have murdered at least 71 teenage girls and women near Seattle and Tacoma, Washington, with the majority being between 1982 and 1984. His victims are believed to be either sex workers or runaways that he picked up along Pacific Coast Highway and strangled. Gary's name, the Green River Killer, comes from his practice of dumping most of his victims around the Green River, although he did have other dump sites around South King County, including near the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. Like most serial killers, Ridgway stuck to several traditions familiar to him in most of his killings, first picking up his victims off of PCH, often showing them a picture of his son to gain their trust, and then raping them before strangling them in either his home truck or a secluded area. However, he did change one practice, starting first by manually strangling them, but later using ligatures due to his victims often leaving wounds and bruises on his arm while trying to fight him off and defend themselves. He would often return to the dump sites to have sex with his victims' dead bodies, but he claims this was not due to an interest in necrophilia, but rather just the way to satisfy his unending sexual urges without having to go through the trouble and risk of obtaining and killing another live victim. Gary's first five victims were found in the Green River, causing the press to nickname the unidentified perpetrator the Green River Killer and the Kings County Sheriff's Office formed the Green River Task Force to begin investigating the murders shortly thereafter. Two members of that task force, Robert Keppel and Dave Reichert, periodically interviewed serial killer Ted Bundy in 1984, and Bundy began giving them his opinion on the psychology, behavior, and motivations of the then-unknown killer. Much of what Bundy suggested did turn out to be true, such as his belief that the killer was returning to the bodies to have sex with them. Bundy suggested the police hide and wait for the killer to return for this reason if they were to ever find a freshly dug grave. 
Ridgway became a suspect for the killings in 1983, taking and passing a polygraph test in 1984, and even giving hair and saliva samples on April 7th of 1987. These samples taken in 1987 would be what eventually led to his arrest, but that would not be until 14 years later in 2001. In the interim, Ridgway met and married his third and final wife, Judith Mawson, in 1985. As previously stated, most of Ridgway's killing was done between 1982 to 1984, and it's believed, partly due to confirmation from both Gary and Judith themselves, that this relationship is the reason for his kill count dropping off dramatically, due to love for Judith making him truly happy. Gary said he truly loved Judith in a prison interview, and Judith herself is quoted as saying, quote, I feel I have saved lives by being his wife and making him happy. While it did lessen his killing quite a bit, Ridgway did have at least three more victims after marrying Judith, and she later noted he would leave for work very early some mornings for overtime pay, and believes these early morning shifts to be when he committed the murders. As previously mentioned, Ridgway was arrested in 2001 from his job as a spray painter at Kenworth Truck Factory after DNA conclusively linked his semen to saliva swabs of four of his victims. Marsha Chapman, Opal Mills, Cynthia Hines, and Carol Ann Christensen. Three more victims, Wendy Caulfield, Deborah Bonner, and Deborah Estes were added to the indictment after a forensic scientist identified microscopic spray paint spheres as a specific brand and composition of paint used at the Kenworth factory during the specific time frame when the victims were killed. Gary was initially convicted of 48 murders, with a 49th being added as part of his plea bargain. This alone makes him the second most prolific serial killer in United States history, according to confirmed murders. But Gary has confessed to 71, and later claimed he had killed so many he actually lost count. To avoid the death penalty, as part of his plea bargain, he led investigators to many of his still-missing victims and received a sentence of life imprisonment without parole as a result. This has been another episode of Murder Mondays, where we take a look at some of the monsters that have plagued society in an attempt to understand just why they became who they became. Stay tuned for a sneak preview of Friday Mystery Theater. And as always, I'll see you next week for more Murder Mondays.